Hi everyone, I'm Commander Danielle Varwig. I am the Deputy Chief of the Aircraft Maintenance Branch here at the NOAA's Aircraft Operations Center, and I also am our Gulfstream G4, uh, one of the aircraft commanders for the Gulfstream G4 aircraft. Hi, my name is Commander Benjamin LaCour. I'm a NOAA Corps officer in NOAA's Uncrewed Systems Operations Center, where I assess NOAA's use and needs of uncrewed systems. Hi, I'm Erica Fru. I'm a program specialist with NOAA's Uncrewed Marine Systems Division. Hi, I'm Carrie Englert. I'm one of the flight directors and meteorologists here at the NOAA Aircraft Operations Center in Lakeland, Florida. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Commander Sharissa Friedlander. I'm a NOAA Corps officer and I've been in the service for 12 years. I'm currently serving as our Marine Operations Advisor. And hello everyone, my name is Sin Chum. I'm a program manager here at NOAA for New Construction Ships. NOAA operates four classes of vessels, and within those classes are two different hull forms, a monohull and a swap. The monohull is represented by the NOAA ship Thomas Jefferson and the NOAA ship Ron Brown. The swap is represented by the NOAA ship Ferdinand Hassler, and the swap is two hull forms side by side connected in the middle. Of our fleet of 15 oceanographic research vessels, we have some that do hydrography, which is going out and looking at the bottom using mapping equipment and technology aboard the ship. We also have ships that do fisheries research in support of our fisheries service. And then we have one ship that does ocean exploration that goes out and uses a remotely operated vehicle to do mapping and explore the bottom of the sea in some pretty remote places. So here at the NOAA Aircraft Operations Center, we actually fly two main categories of aircraft. We have what's known as our heavy aircraft, which is our P3 that you can see right here behind me, as well as our G4 aircraft. But we also have light aircraft as well, which are the Twin Otter as well as the King Air airframes. An uncrewed system is a robot that NOAA uses to collect data for different NOAA missions, but they do not have any people on board. NOAA uses uncrewed systems both in the air and on and below the water to collect different data for our science offices. Because NOAA is a U.S. agency, we have our home ports all over the United States. On the East Coast, our ships are supported out of Norfolk, Virginia, at the Marine Operations Center Atlantic, whose future home is Newport, Rhode Island. On the West Coast, we have our ships supported out of the Marine Operations Center Pacific in Newport, Oregon. We also have a hub in the Gulf of Mexico out of Pascagoula, Mississippi, and then we also have ships coming in and out of Hawaii at our Marine Operations Center Pacific Islands. And in Alaska, we just added the Ketchikan home port, which will help support our ships up in the Alaska region. So as of right now, we have plans to sundown, that means kind of retire our Gulfstream G4 and bring on a Gulfstream G550, a newer, hotter aircraft to do the same mission, uh, maybe a little bit more efficiently and even at higher altitudes and for longer durations of time. We're also looking to phase out our P3s uh, with some C-130s at least. Um, one, maybe two, not quite sure what the future holds with that. And then we also just acquired uh, our third King Air aircraft, and I'm sure there'll be provisions for more in the coming years ahead. Likewise, with the Twin Otter, we may have a fifth Twin Otter. Again, who knows what the future holds for that. So there are various types of uncrewed systems that NOAA uses. Generally, when we talk about uncrewed systems, we put them into three different bins or think about them in three different bins. One is in the air, one is at the surface of the ocean, and then one is below the ocean. And within those bins, there's all different types of systems. So for instance, we have a uncrewed aerial system here that we use for doing marine mammal surveys or taking images of a shoreline. So this would be one type of uh, vehicle that we use. Then in some of the other systems we have, they can operate for extended periods of time, some of which can operate for months at a time, and other ones have a shorter duration, but they can do a lot more in that shorter period of time. Our ships conduct a variety of scientific missions, anything from fishery surveying to ecosystem research to ocean exploration, and of course our hydrography ships that are doing some really cool mapping. Our ships are outfitted 
with advanced technology to accomplish these missions. For example, we have powerful sonars that allow us to chart and survey the ocean floor, as well as to find fish and mammals. Furthermore, our ships are also outfitted with equipment to do stationary and on-the-go water sampling. Outside of the hurricane season or during the rest of the year, we do employ both our light aircraft as well as our heavy aircraft. Our light aircraft are really employed year round. They conduct snow surveys as well as coastal mapping. And the heavier aircraft, we really do a lot of research, a lot of science projects uh, to include atmospheric rivers, for example, you might have heard of. And that really surveys those large storms that hit the west coast, right, and impact with those substantial amounts of rain. Even outside of atmospheric rivers, we actually often head up to Alaska and we survey sea ice as well as northern latitude storms. And outside of those projects, a lot of times we'll use this opportunity to test some emerging technologies and some of these technological advancements such as the P3 deployable drones. Depending on NOAA's science needs, we can use both aerial vehicles and ocean or marine vehicles to collect the data that NOAA needs. Uh, for example, we can use these aerial quadcopters to collect visual surveys of marine mammals out over the ocean, but we can also listen for marine mammals using passive acoustics on a buoyancy glider from under the water. Another example would be where we use surface vehicles in the ocean to measure not only the atmospheric conditions around the vessel, but also to measure the oceanography below it or what's happening in the ocean below that. We've done that in storms and hurricanes and things like that. Our ships typically go out to sea for a few weeks at a time. They're limited, of course, by how much food that they can carry to support the crew and how much fuel that the vessel can run on. So as far as getting damaged in the event of a hurricane flight, we do have our G4 that tends to fly over the storm and our P3 actually flies directly through the storm. But in both instances, we are talking about a hurricane and in some cases, weather damage is unavoidable. As far as being a flight director and navigating through the storm, we do want to make sure safety is paramount and maintain the airworthiness of the aircraft. Uh, and one of the tactics we use to do this uh, in the P3 is to keep the winds at a 90 degree angle off of our left wing so that the aircraft, again, maintains that airworthiness and wings level flight. So in NOAA, we're using uncrewed systems really to enhance what our fleet of ships and aircraft do. Uh, we get the question a lot, you know, are these systems supposed to replace these, the ships and aircraft that we own and operate already? And the answer is no. In a lot of cases, we use these systems to uh, safely get information and data that we aren't able to get with ships and aircraft. And so in those situations, we're getting new things that we weren't able to get before. And then other examples where we use them basically to enhance what we're doing is, for example, we have this uncrewed surface vehicle here, the Drix that we use alongside our ships that basically can collect almost you know, twice as much data as the ship can collect because it's surveying at the same time as the ship out there without people aboard it. Yes, we do have plans. Currently, we have two ships under construction, the NOAA ship Oceanographer and the NOAA ship Discoverer. In addition, we have two hydrography vessels under detailed design, and those will be the new charting and survey vessels. Lastly, we have plans for three more vessels that will be for the coastal science fishery missions. So as the deputy chief of the aircraft maintenance branch, our mission is maintenance professionals performing professional maintenance. And that, I mean, we've got it going on right now. It's nonstop. The light aircraft, our King Airs and our Twin Otters, they are 365, 24-7, their missions are continuously ongoing. For the heavy aircraft, our P3 and our G4, hurricane season is really like showtime. You know, when a plane goes down, everyone works together to include our light aircraft mechanics to try and ensure that our aircraft are up as soon as possible. And we're proud to say that we do a lot of our maintenance in-house because we have some of the best people on earth to do what they do here. So I'm so proud of them and I'm extremely lucky to have them work on the aircraft that I'm flying out over hurricanes. 
just like your car, our uncrewed systems do require maintenance on regular intervals. Uh, what they require is a lot less of, on scale than the ships or the aircraft, which allows us to maintain them a bit quicker and get them back to conducting science. Our NOAA workforce on the ships is made up of a blended crew. We have civilian professional mariners that can include chief bosuns in our deck department, licensed and unlicensed engineers, and also survey techs that work with our visiting scientists. We also have uniformed service personnel, like myself, that are NOAA for it, that are up in the pilot house driving the ship. And then we also have visiting scientists who assist with the data collection. So uncrewed systems use a couple different sources of power, one of which is renewable energy. So some vehicles can use wind energy. Uh, we have some that use solar energy, and then some even use wave energy. So these systems, basically the ones that use renewable energy, they can collect energy from the environment while they're collecting data at the same time. When I was at Northwest Center, the autonomous underwear vehicle we used there ran off of 16 rechargeable laptop batteries. So in addition to battery power, we also, for some of our vehicles, use traditional fuel sources as well. As far as pre-flight procedures go before a hurricane flight, um, our entire mission crew will get together and conduct a mission briefing. So we'll talk about what the objectives are, where we're flying, how long the flight's gonna be, how many of our drop signs we're going to be releasing, and the general idea of what the mission's going to look like. So we try to identify all of the hazards, what the risks are like, and whether or not we're willing to take those risks. And we can, you know, adjust our flight plan as necessary based off of what our flight directors or in-flight meteorologists uh, advise us of while we're there in the, in the mission briefing. Once that mission briefing is concluded, after we talk about the risks, hazards, safety measures that we take appropriately, it's almost like any other normal flight that we do, at least from a pilot's perspective. When our ships are not conducting science, our crew is hard at work in making sure everything is maintained and running smoothly. That could be anything from down in the engine room to making sure our mission and sampling equipment is good to go for the next time we're doing science. In addition, NOAA conducts routine technology refreshes to ensure our scientific equipment are in compliance with the latest industry standards. Furthermore, we conduct mid-life repairs to maximize the service life of our vessels. In the winter, we often perform dockside and dry dock maintenance. Sometimes that means sending NOAA divers into the water to make sure that they can clean off the marine growth and barnacles that might have accumulated over time during the sampling season. Uncrewed systems mean that nobody is aboard these vehicles. However, we always have a team of people in the background monitoring the mission and the science being collected. These teams can include pilots, engineers, technicians and the ship's crew or airplane crew working on the mission with us. Life on the ships is very different from life ashore. We're always working on the ships and that could be 24 hours a day. You could be starting your work day at 4 a.m., going up to the pilot house to drive the ship, or maybe you're an engineer coming on watch at 8 p.m. and finishing your day at 8 a.m. We're always working and our departments are always collaborating with the scientists to make sure that we're getting the mission done. So as far as gathering the data on the hurricanes, both the P3 and the G4 have several sensors, um, but one of the main sensors that we use for both of these aircraft is called the tail Doppler radar or TDR for short. And this really looks essentially like a tail on the back of both of these aircraft. This radar data is transmitted in real time to the Hurricane Center so that they can use it to update forecasts and really improve them. Um, in addition though to that tail Doppler radar, we also have various other sensors as well as expendables, such as this drops on here, that we launch from one of the stations in the aircraft, again, both the G4 and the P3, and they provide us with an atmospheric sounding or profile, essentially, of air temperature, humidity, pressure, and then we will get surface wind speeds as well from um, not only this sensor, but some of our other sensors on the aircraft. How do I become a UXS operator? There are a lot of paths to get here. 
Do you enjoy playing video games? That would make you a great ROV pilot with a remote control. Do you enjoy coding or programming? You could program an autonomous underwater vehicle to take pictures of the bottom of the ocean. Do you enjoy geography? We use our uncrewed systems to make maps of the seafloor. To ensure we have a well-trained team to operate these systems and operate them safely and efficiently, we work with a couple of partners to do that. We work with academia, who has a lot of experience with these systems. We work with industry, the people who build them and create them. And then we also have our own in-house folks that train our, our people as well. As we mentioned, there's lots of different ways to get involved on the NOAA ships. If you're interested in becoming a NOAA Corps officer like myself, we have a whole recruiting division that can help you. We typically look for folks with science and math degrees and a handful of STEM credits, science, technology, engineering, and math. In addition, NOAA is always looking for civilian mariners with merchant marine credentials, both in the deck and engineering departments. So in NOAA, we have a fleet of these uncrewed aircraft and uncrewed marine systems. And part of my role is to continually assess the need and the demand for these things. Within the USS Operations Center, we have an uncrewed marine division and an uncrewed aircraft division that's staffed with experts to really help and support operations across NOAA for all these uncrewed systems. <laughs>